Hampton, Virginia, and uh, introduce you to the one and only Monique AJ Smith is in the building, virtually, of course. And Monique, uh, I want to say uh, good afternoon and welcome to you. And if you don't mind, please tell the people a little bit about yourself. Well, thanks, Brian. I'm really excited about being here with you today. I'm a leadership strategist for athletic departments, sport organizations, and individuals who wish to advance in athletic administration, sports business, or into the marketplace. My main interest, honestly, are Black women because I'm a 30-year veteran of athletic administration. I started out as a sports information director. I became an athletic director at 28 years old. Uh, I worked for um, uh, compliance for Division I institution and I served the CIAA for 13 years. Um, I've been a consultant since 2005, and in 2013, I took my consulting full time. And so that's the basic, but one of the things that really my workshops I do for the universities is leadership, soft skills, um, growth mindset. I really work with staff, and um, I do work with student athletes from a leadership standpoint. And I really enjoy that because my whole purpose is to plant seeds of empowerment to lead others to greatness. Also, I have a, I'm a podcaster of eight years where I interview African-American female athletic administrators, I have a magazine where I highlight uh, the specialized knowledges of black women athletic administration and a co-author and an adjunct at Hampton University. Listen, Monique, I you're <laughs> you're uh, like a master class. You're one of my favorite examples in um, Black Speakers Network uh, amongst our members of people who have found a a niche. Uh, y'all, you'll hear us talk about that a lot. A niche, an area of expertise um, that you can't be you can't be questioned. That thirty years of uh, sports management like experience, it is just no question to me uh, why you are um, so valuable in this world and you figured out a way to pivot and, and, and give that back. So I, I have a few questions. I love to start because there might be some people that really aren't familiar with the uh, collegiate athletic world and um, exactly what that means. And so uh, primarily, are you saying that you're going into colleges uh, speaking directly to um, you know coaches, assistant coaches, and folks that are directly responsible for um, uh, uh, I, I guess, facilitating college athletic programs. And then um, as a follow-up to that, what, what, are you, what do you primarily see as the number one struggle that you're addressing mm -hmm. from a leadership perspective with those individuals? Well, you, you mentioned the coaches, but there's another layer. It's the leadership over the coaches or work with the coaches. Let's be, let's be nice about it. But it. you have assistant ADs that have oversight over sports that's over the coaches, and you have academics, you have compliance, you have facilities, um, you have development, which is raising money for the athletic department. Depending upon what level we're talking about, you can have several layers in between that and the coach. Now you go to division three or division two, you know, you may have a coach that has um, administrative roles. And, uh, you know, how do you balance that? And then, um, you know, uh, it, it has more of a family atmosphere, but, you know, even a family may need some type of direction of how to go. Because, again, you have people with different uh, agendas and it's like a, a ship. The ship is fishtailing because you got everybody going in different directions. And so what I do is I have a conversation with the leadership and, and how because sometimes you can't talk to your own team. You need to bring a facilitator in to assist with that. And so to answer your second question, you know, one, one, of, one of the main ones is uh, communication. Uh, not knowing how to communicate with somebody communicates different than you. Um, the other one um, is really being in alignment. You know, why are you here? Are you really here to get to the next stepping stone? Or do you know what the mission and the vision of the athletic department you are at the time. And so I tell leadership, you set the expectations, people eliminate themselves, you know? And so that's 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 two. And then the third one um, is uh, what, what my main one of recent is called, our playing field is expanding. And so beyond being X's and O's and wins and losses, 
you can't coach the way you were coached because you're going to be fired. You, the day of doing that is over. So you have to be aware of social justice. You have to be aware of mental health. And you have to embrace name, image, and likeness because the day is changed in athletics. So if you take those three right there, you have a different ingredient to be a leader within athletic administration if you embrace that. Well, that's actually what I was going to ask you next. And that's a that's a beautiful explanation. I think in general, uh, the state of uh, the world continues to change. And of course, uh, these uh, college campuses, whether student athletes or not, aren't insulated from the things that are happening. So you mentioned, you know, social you know, justice. You mentioned, um, you know, the, the mental health component, uh, as well as uh, the, the image and likeness conversations that have kind of dominated the news cycle when it comes to student athletes. And so these are all like shifting dynamics. And so uh, I imagine it, it is a much more challenging to, uh, to, to be a leader in any capacity um, in college. But, you know, I feel like student athletes are particularly already coming in. Um, uh, I, I mean, I can't imagine what it, the, the amount of stress that it would be to be a division one division two any college athlete at any level really to have to manage that and also deal with home and life and, and also you know actually graduate and keep your grades up so like with that in mind uh, do you find yourself having to continuously maybe go back and uh, are you are you working with uh, clients like longitudinally where they bring you bring you in on a consistent basis uh, or is it or do you find yourself uh, implementing kind of established programs and then perhaps going back and revisiting after a certain period of time? Like what's what's the, the cycle for you when it comes to addressing these type of issues? Well, you know, athletics is seasonal. So sure. when I do staff retreats, it's seasonal. It's usually in August or the spring and sometimes the summer. So, you know, from a university standpoint, that's it. But I have been doing individual executive coaching uh, with the top executives. And that has been working out very well because again, I'm able to uh, fix some fixed mindsets into some growth mindsets and be able to see about some alignments. Because again, uh, advancement is dealing with how you deal with the no's. So most of the time people don't know that uh, how to strategically uh, win an issue. And I say politics is not a dirty word. It is a game like spades. You just got to learn how the relationships are face cards. So I kind of teach, teach those kind of things uh, to help it go along. But a thing about the other issues, it's like name, image, and likeness. I partner. So with my podcast, I'm able to introduce uh, different entities. And so and then I have an advanced academy where people pay me membership and I guide them. So I have someone coming in actually uh, this weekend to talk about name, image, and likeness from a attorney standpoint, which is key because different states have different ways to deal with that. So I, I'm a lifelong learner, as you can see the books behind me. And I will, I will bring people in to do that. So I, I do a lot of individual work, you know, to help other people because again, uh, I tell coaches and individuals, I say, you can't, um, you can always hire somebody to coach like you, but you really can't hire anybody to lead like you. So again, moving up, that's the only way that you can move up is to have someone under you and you got to relinquish that whistle or relinquish that title to go and move up. Cause I, I'm, I'm all about growth. That's why I, my thing is called chat in the garden. I want everybody to think about growth when you think about me. Wow. Yeah, there's so much to unpack there. I, I'm looking at the comments and, you know, uh, people are just, I, I you know, I, I think it's, again, this is a niche. It's a very specific world, uh, but there's broadband prints. I mean, leadership is leadership across the board. And it's so uh, cool to see that we have somebody that's um, dedicated like you to making sure that uh, we can create like healthy programs across our colleges and universities. Um, Last question, uh, with the few seconds that we have left, uh, we're going to ask about legacy. How is it, Monique, that you want people to remember you? Well, it's two. 
One is planting seeds of empowerment to lead others to greatness. And the second one is I want to help lead others lead their ship to their desired destination. Beautifully said. Listen, Monique, I'm so uh, grateful that you are here. Thank you for sharing this. I, I have I have like notes and homework of stuff to go back and <laughs> just like learn about uh, some podcast episodes from you. I need to go back and listen to uh, because, you know, I, I, I was not familiar with, you know, even how big of a conversation like name, image and likeness is and just the, the leadership. So lots of homework for me to do, but I'm sure that there are a lot of people that are excited about connecting with you and learning more from you. So uh, please make your way over to blackspeakersnetwork.com forward slash speaker directory if you want to connect with Monique. Uh, she's the only Monique AJ Smith uh, in our uh, directory, so she be pretty easy to find. And as you can see, she has lots of programs, resources all the time going out. Um, so she is easily Googleable as well. But Monique, thank you again. Um, and just thanks for being part of Black Speakers Network community. And I'm looking forward to continuing to uh, learn and partner with you. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you.